Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial from Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's tutorial, we're going to discuss how to use Sequencer or, or more like how to change material parameters using Sequencer. So this is really for people who want to create cinematics in Unreal Engine and it's always been problematic to be able to change, I don't know, maybe a color from black to white or something like that, or uh, maybe making a noise texture creating a ripple effect across the surface of a mesh. Uh, if you want to do that in Sequencer, there are, you know, obviously um, other ways as well, but the one that I use is uh, via, collect, you know, parameter collections. So I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'm going to show you a clear, you know, a more complicated example, but also a simplified version of that. And I'm sure you guys can then put it into action and do your own animations of your materials. Uh, I know with this is very easy in something like Blender where, you know, you can animate every slider in the shader uh, editor, but in Unreal Engine, it's a bit more complicated than that. I don't really know why it's so complex, but, you know, this is a game engine f uh, foremost, so uh, I think that's why, but I think in the future they will improve on this. So let's not waste any more time. Let's start the tutorial straight after the quick promo. If you want to support the Arganian's Puzzle Box channel, please consider purchasing one of my projects from ArtStation or Gumroad. It's literally the price of a coffee and it gives you a fully fledged space project to use in Unreal Engine and there's also some Blender options in there as well. Also, you can become a Patreon member or YouTube member and then you get access to these projects anyway. So consider that maybe if you want to support me. But let's not waste any more time and let's begin. So like um, every other uh, tutorial that I make, I want to do a bit of a breakdown very quickly. So we showcase what are the changes here. We're currently within a, a cinematic. It's a very heavy scene. As you can see, I'm not getting a lot of FPS in here because I've got a lot of things going on. So I've used this scene for the previous cinematic. Um, if I move the slider, so my camera is currently animated. If I move the sequencer, you know, to certain, I'll just bring the sequencer over so you can see it as well. So there's these parameters here for the planet, where it's got a sea level, river, erosion, color, and other such um, settings like the atmosphere and so on. And there's some sequence um, events that are happening. So if I move the sequence, you will be able to to see, um, you know, the, the desert planet. Sorry, the desert planet that we had in the first shot. And if we go to the last, you know, sort of further down in the shot, you can see that the planet has then turned blue and so on. Actually, if I switch this over into this mode, you know, so it's a, it's basically a uh, unlit mode. Um, if I move the sequence, you can see how the planet turns, um, it turns blue. And as I said, this is this is purely controlled through material parameters. So that's this is the this is the way to be able to um, activate your materials, you know, change the variables on your materials within Sequencer by setting up parameters for them specifically. So, uh, you know, I, I've shown you the effect, um, and I'm going to use this as an example, and then I'll you know I'll show you quickly how to set this up in order to get your own effect very very uh, quickly, and then that can be used in any project that you've got. Now what we've got here is a basic scene. I just added my blueprint, which is a planet. Uh, it doesn't matter, as I've said, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a, a something, a blueprint or a mesh with a material, I'll show you the material. This is a material instance, so obviously I've got a lot of options that I can change about this uh, particular planet. But also, this is the material itself. It's a very expansive material, but none of this really matters because in the end, all you need is a material parameter. Like in this particular case, I've got sea level, I've got river erosion. And what you're noticing is that they're linked to these multiply nodes in which I have a collection parameter, uh, which is not material, it's like a, it's just a collection, a parameter collection. And where this, does, where this comes into play is that if you are back into the scene, and you've opened the sequencer. So I've created a level sequence and then I want to now start messing around with this planet. Now you might be tempted to say, well, clearly if I'm trying to change the uh, parameters of this particular object, this planet, then I would need to go in track, active the sequence and then select the planet. 
but that's not that that's not how it works actually you won't really get a lot of you know you won't really get anything there uh, unless the parameters themselves were actually um you know made so that they're available in the blueprint to be seen in the cinematic so you could then pr press track in here and then you'll be able to see you know things like sea level water refresh blueprint whatever was exposed in the blueprint but none of those actually will do anything because if i put sea level for example and now i start playing around with a slider nothing actually happens so what you need to do instead so let's just uh, delete the, the blueprint entirely that you know the the part that we added entirely and just press the track button and then over here you've got material parameter collection track and from here you can select in this particular case I've, I've got my m planet so i can click that one and then i've got a list of parameters that i can choose now if i actually um you know right click um m planet i think i've got do i have a search button here no it doesn't seem like i do but you know what i'm just gonna um quickly bring my content browser up and then i'm just gonna go in my content and really search for m was that was that how i named it m planet right so that's the parameter right there um i'm just going to double click it so we can open it and this is the parameter that i've created now in order to create a parameter like this uh, let's just go into our content content browser where i've got my tutorial file if i right click and then i go into materials you'll see you've got in here um well you've got material instance function and so on uh, but then you've also got material parameter collection so if you click that one you're now creating a parameter material let's call this m underscore tutorial planet okay now because i've added that in there i can double click it and this will open uh, the material parameter and you can see we've got nothing in the vector or the scalar parameters so just bear in mind that these particular um, uh, settings will only work for scalar and vector parameters uh, if we check our previous parameter you can see it's got nine ar array elements so it's got a sea level atmosphere brightness color for the continents and so on what we're going to do is we're going to create a parameter, a scalar parameter for the sea level. So if we press the plus button and then we have a look in here, we've got a parameter name. So you can name that whatever you want, but I will name it sea level because that's actually I'm going to name it sea level tutorial. So we can, you know, we clearly know which one it is. And I've got a default value of zero. I can put that to one, but I'll leave it as zero for now. You can press the save button and now this parameter is saved in this way if we go back into our material over here uh i can you know obviously as i said to you you can add the multiply node um because you you'll have to you'll have to basically combine your normal parameter within the material the one that also shows up in the uh, material instance itself you'll want to um put that together with the material parameter uh that you've generated in a collection in, in this particular uh, collection here. So in the material, um, you'll want to right click and search for material. Uh, sorry, you want the parameter, let me just, yeah, collection parameter. There we go. So once you drop that in, the material, the collection parameter will ask you what collection you want to use. So we were using M planet previously, but we can use M tutorial planet. And then we've got the parameter name. So we can set that to C level tutorial. And now we can plug that into the multiply node over here. And I'm going to press apply. And this will obviously save the material with this new parameter added. Um, now, if we go back into, let me just, let's just wait for the material to save first. Now that the material is saved, we can have a look into um, into our sequence. So let me just go back here. So we've got our M planet, but obviously we created a new one. So I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to go back to track and select material parameter collection track and then select M tutorial planet. With that selected, we can press the plus button. And the only thing available is obviously the sea level tutorial. And this will automatically add a key point over here into at frame zero, whatever frame you were on. That's where it's going to add a, um, a key, an animation note. Um, right, so that's now added. If we, let's say, go over here to frame 60, 
I can then put this all the way to number one. So now we've got a lot of, you know, the sea level is up. So we literally controlled the, um, we controlled the material from, you know, within here. We controlled it via the sequencer. Uh, again, we didn't actually have to use um, anything in here. So we didn't actually have to use any of these, any of these sliders because you wouldn't be able to use these sliders anyway uh, within the uh, within the sequence that you'd have to do what I've done uh, but that is a very quick and nice way of being able to achieve this effect and I, I can add other things here as well so I could go into my material and you know I've got the river erosion here I would need to create uh, my own version in the M planet underscore tutorial or I could just simply go into the um, uh, sequencer add this other uh, material parameter and then also and then track the river erosion um, and then I can just say well you know what I want I want some some rivers to erode as you can see that's what's happening you know I'm creating a lot of erosions there and um, you know I could take that over to, to this point and then by the time it reaches this point I want the erosion to have completely you know to, to have subsided to zero so then if we play the animation you'll see that the erosion is gone okay now we can move these keys further down so the animation is slower you can see how the sea level comes in and then the rivers go away because that's what happens when the sea eats the <laughs> eats the whole planet um or the ocean eats the whole planet rivers go away <laughs> Right. Okay. So that was um, that was really it with that sort of setup. I'm just going to show you a very basic example now of something very simple, just so that you clearly get the idea. As a very simple example, what I've done here is I've created a sphere and added a color to it. Uh, the material itself is quite simple. We've got a pink color, a green color into an interpolate node, and we're using our M material parameter hue change that's what i've called it so i've created within you can see it down here this is the m tutorial parameter i have created a new scalar parameter called hue change and it's got a default value of zero whenever this is zero the pink color will be shown when this goes to one the green color will be shown now very important to note is that in the previous example in the video i had the parameter going into a multiply node between another parameter and then into a node which went to the base color. In this particular case, I don't need to do that because the the I, I don't need the material instance to control um, that color at all. This is a very simple example. So in this particular case, if we go back into our world, we've got the M tutorial parameter added. This is obviously from within this um, collection track. And then I can bring in the hue change and I can move the slider change this to one and as you can see as the animation is playing it will change into green so from pink to green and this is how you do it this is the most basic thing that you can do in order to change your material parameters as your sequence is playing um, so you know if you want to do that in real time when during gameplay that is a whole different ballpark this is specifically designed for cinematics. So that concludes our tutorial. I hope you guys uh, learned something. I know that this can be very useful and very powerful if you have a, um, a project in which takes, you know, it takes advantage of the materials that you set up, if you've got procedural materials especially. Uh, but yeah, I would, I mean, I would really like to thank my patrons uh, and also the people that have purchased my projects from Gumroad and ArtStation. You can find all my projects on there at the price of a coffee so if you guys like me to, like to see me guzzling loads of coffee which uh, i'm actually out of coffee right now so i'm gonna go and make one but if you want to support me any any further and you want to see me continue doing what i'm doing then please feel free to you know head on over to patreon head on over to my art station portfolio and have a look um i've recently uh, released my nebula um, a generator for evn cycles so maybe you want to use that in blender that will be i mean it's quite awesome and some really amazing effects can be done with it and yeah that's it i'll see you guys in the next one so goodbye <laughs>